Good morning, this is Cody Henriksen. Today we're gonna to be looking at how we can use the Java string methods to do some basic stuff with strings, especially for the AP computer science exam, as well as just basic programming using Java. So as you can see right here, we have two different subsets we're looking at. Now the one on the left in the purple, we have our Java AP subset for string, the ones you have to know you're gonna be tested on in the exam. Definitely to make sure you cover that. On the right, however, we've got the cool subset. These are some cool ones you definitely should know because they provide extra functionality and features that make life a lot easier, especially if we're gonna continue on using Java programming. So let's take a look at the AP subset of Java for string. We have, of course, our two string constructors, the string constructor with no parameter and string constructor with a string parameter, as well as the methods dot length dot substring with a single parameter of int substring with two int parameters, index up with a string, equals with a string, and dot compare to with a string. These are the ones you need to know. They're on the exam. You definitely have to make sure you cover them as part of the, um, before, as you prep for the exam. Okay? We'll definitely see them. On the constructor side, this is what you do to actually make a string, because that's what a constructor does, is it builds the object. So we have our default constructor, the parameterless constructor, which creates the empty string. Nothing. Yeah. Well, you can do that, but that means you have to still replace it with something else anyway later on, so yeah, don't use it. Now we have the more effective constructor, the string parameter constructor, which creates the string instance to follow the contents of the supplied parameter. In this case, string, my other string, makes a new string with the contents of words. Yes, I know, boring, but we're good. Now, the more common way that we use, especially for simple programs and for testing programs, is the idea of the string literal. This is also how we use it to when we're using the um, returning a value and assigning it to a variable, as we call a method, is the string literal. It's not really a constructor, it just assigns the value directly into that variable. And this is the most common way of using that. And so it creates a string from the supplied text. There is no new. What? It's an object and no new? That's right, because it's a literal vocab word you should know. Make sure you stress it and come back to it. String literal equals this is a literal. So that is a way that we're going to use that. Now, this is something that provides some cool functionality and some confusion later on in some more advanced string topics you can look at. That would be something to look at in some of the other videos. But this is the main way you're going to be using strings anyway. So just get used to it. Remember what's it called? It's a literal. Now, because we're looking at how big a string is quite often, when we're finding, like, for example, where something in the string is or how big the many characters it is so we can see which we're going to put inside a storage facility or doing something like that, we have to figure out how big it is. However, because strings have an actual object as its structure, it's not something weird like array, but it has a method we have to call. Now, which method do we call? With an array, because arrays are immutable, strings follow that same process, and in Java, when they made things that were immutable, aka they couldn't change in size, they're fixed, they use dot length as the way to describe that. And so because that's the case, and strings are a real object, unlike arrays, which are, they're an object, but they're, they're weird, they're hipster. But because strings are real and they work like a regular object, they have methods, the dot length with parens is how we specify how big that string is. And that uh, bigness never changes until we replace the contents of that string. So in this case, I have string my string equals wowzers, and that's again a literal. And so int length equals my string dot length, which is assigned the value of seven, because there are seven individual characters inside wowzers that go then into that variable right there. When we want to look inside a string, there's two different ways we can actually do them. They're both using the substring method. One is an overloaded version of the other. And so we want to make sure we use them properly. Now, you do need to remember when we're working with strings in Java, the index always starts off at zero, and the last possible value of a string is dot length minus one. However, the acceptable parameter when we're looking at this, it has a range of zero up to and including length. Because we'll see how that can be worked in some of our advanced videos, but you have from zero up to length for the spot that you can do because of the way that the substring parameter works. So the first one we have is a substring parameter passing a single integer. This is an inclusive value. And what it does is it takes from that supplied index to the end of the string. This is great to get the last part of the string. So say, for example, you're looking for someone's first name and last name together as a string where it's separated by spaces. If you have the substring and you use the index of on the first space, then, oh, first time it hits a space, boom, right there. The rest of it is their last name if it's only a two-name person. Great way to do some stuff with that. This is the great way to find the last part of the string, especially in conjunction with the index of method. Now, the substring method of two can also be used in the same way using a two-parameter method, where we're going to do mystring.substring passing it two as our first parameter. However, we then use mystring.length as the second parameter because it goes up to, but not including, that second spot, aka length, because I can go zero, one, two, three, four to that fifth spot, and I can pass it five, the length of it, but it doesn't include five, it only goes to the fourth spot. So we're good to go on that. And so let's take a look now at the substring with two parameters. This is the more refined way of working with strings. This is the way you actually want to use string, um, parts of strings quite often because you only want to get the specific part, not just here to the end. You want this part to this part or this part to that part. No, only one direction. You can't go negative. Backwards doesn't work. So we want to make sure we do this, and this is often done 
all the time we're using a loop trying to find the individual letters. This is actually something we do quite often. Now I'm not purposely showing the code for that, but as you can see right here, I have string current letter equals my string dot substring passing index comma index plus one, which will let you go letter by letter by letter by letter by letter by letter by letter if you're using that inside the body of a loop that uses index as a looping variable. Great way to parse through a string and do cool things based on the letters involved. Now, we often really need to look inside a string and find out where something is, and that's where in the AP subset we use the index of method. The index of method with a single string parameter allows us to find that where in the current string, the calling string on the left-hand side of the dot operator, is the parameter string, aka the one inside the parens. And so if it's in there, it's going to give the index space location as where it is. Remember, indices start at zero, and so it's going to be zero up to something at length minus one. However, if you try to find something that's really big and something that's really small, there's no way that the big thing's gonna fit in small things. This is not the TARDIS. So that's gonna only give us a negative one. So again, if it's not there, the word's not, say for example, not inside that, or if for example, that the word is too big to fit inside the box, it's not gonna fit in there, it's gonna return the value to negative one because the index can't be negative one because that's not what you can actually access inside the string. Now, we often need to compare strings as well. Comparing strings we're going to be using with the compare to string method. Compare to is where we implement the comparable interface. It's something that does some really cool, amazing things. And we have to do a couple things as we look at that. Comparable, um, excuse me, compare to in string uses the lexicographic order. However, the lexicographic order has a couple uh, caveats we have to keep in mind. When we're talking about lexicographic order, we're talking about by letter, by letter, by letter, by letter. And it also matters based on the case. And so this matters based on the first substring within it, aka the first parameter, first letter of each sequence, and makes those com uh, comparisons based on that, and also the fact that the casing matters. So we'll get an integer less than zero, not necessarily negative one, some negative number though. If the um, calling string, aka the one that, again, that's on the left-hand side of the dot operator, and before compare to, not the one that's inside the parens. So if it's before that parameter, a dot compare to b, a is before b, so we will get a negative value. Car, C A R, is before C A T. C A R is before cat, C A T, because R is before T. But C is the same, A is the same, oh, but R is earlier. So that's at that point, as soon as we find the first part where it's not going to be happening before letters, that's where that evaluation happens. Now, if we do some text with a capital S dot compared to other text, S is before O because it's capitalized. I know, not quite totally alphabetic, but we have to remember that capital letters actually matter. So again, A dot compared to A with capital A versus lowercase a, case matters, and so we have a different version with that. We also have the value of getting a zero back if it's the exact same string. So A dot compared to A, oh, zero, letter A, letter A, okay, good, we're good to go. Now, if we use greater than zero, if the letter on the string on the left of that is after the parameter, so b dot compared to a, we'll get a positive value, a greater than zero value. So b dot compared to a gives us some positive number, maybe one, maybe 105. We don't have to worry about that. Cat dot compared to car, because cat, c, a, yeah, t, o, r, yep. t comes after r, so cat is gonna give us a greater than zero value, because cat is after car in the dictionary. And we'll see that example in some code in just a bit. We also have the comparing strings, the dot equals method. Now this is where we, again, we want to remember that when we're working with objects, aka the things that start with capital letters in Java, when we're working with objects, we never, ever, ever, ever want to use the equals equals operator. We use the dot equals method to compare objects because that's how we measure if the objects are the same. This is one of the ones you'll use most often. It's gonna be very helpful in the AP subset. You definitely want to remember this. It's also a great way to remember that we're using this to compare strings because it's also great to remember this one to use the equals method on strings because we also have the really cool, also a very helpful, but not in the subset version, equals ignore case. Oh, is the capital letter and lowercase letter, but they're the same letters? Sweet, we'll use dot equals ignore case and we're good to go. We don't want to use the equals equals operator, but those are comparing objects and that's not what we're talking about, the instance of the objects, so we don't want to actually use that. So me dot equals me with a capital M, false, because they're not the same exact character sequence. Me dot equals me, hey, that's true because those are the same character sequences. Me dot equals ignore case me, also true, because again, if we ignore case, if we call dot two lowercase and dot two uppercase on, bo on both of them, it'll be good to go and it doesn't matter. However, me equals equals me, uh -huh, false, asterisk. Now, this is not guaranteed. We'll see some of the results on that if you wanna look at some advanced videos with string pool and do some cool stuff with that. But me equals equals me is gonna return false. It's not a good way of comparison because we don't know exactly what's going on behind the scenes in Java. That's something we, we abstract out, we don't have to worry about, but those are not the same object and we, so we don't use the equals equals op, um, to compare them. Equals equals is only for three things, ints, chars, and booleans. Never objects, never doubles. Use them only for those three basic types because that's the only way we can get an exact value comparison that's safe and good to go. 
We, however, have the cool subset. Now, the cool subset is where we're going to do some cool stuff with Java that goes above and beyond with the AP test. Now, again, a reminder, when you're talking about the cool subset, this is not the time of thing that you want to use when you're talking about doing the AP free response question at the end of the year. These are the things, however, that make your life easier, especially if you go beyond the AP exam and want to do some more com uh, cool computer programming using Java and strings. So we want to look inside a string quite often. Now, index of is great. It lets us find the first time we see a single string within another other string. However, we really do a lot more than that when we're looking inside strings, especially talking about maybe big data, or talking about parsing a file. We're going to use some other ways to actually look at that. So the first one we have is a really simple one, the dot contains. Is it anywhere inside there? Yes, no. Okay? And that's the way it's like um, really good to go and look inside strings, and especially if you chain it with the dot two lowercase or dot two uppercase methods, because that way it's like, is this anywhere inside the string in any case? Boom, it is. Case sweet. We can proceed and move on. The last index of method is really, really helpful. What's the last time you see that? Um, you want to find the extension itself? Well, last index of, of dot txt, dot um, jpeg, dot gif, whatever. We can find that right there, immediately find the last index and see what that index to start it off. So we can then prepend from that and figure out what the file name is, any path information, maybe figure out a URL. Great stuff to use and do some really cool features with that. However, even more amazing than the last index of and dot contains is the index of with two parameters. The index of with two parameters allows us to really find out where is this thing after this other spot. So if I want to find out where the index of the um, this three letter sequence, five letter sequence, word sequence, string sequence, whatever it is, after the, this spot right here, I can find out where it is by using that index of parameter with an int parameter. So it's look for the string after this int. So it looks from that part as the starting point so I can see where it's in there. And again, if it's not there, guess what? Negative one again. But those are some really cool, helpful things we can actually use for that. Now, we also need to change the string quite often. Now, I, I know I said this earlier that strings are immutable. That's why we have dot length, but wait. Strings can be changed if we replace what's going inside them using the equal sign. And also we all need to manipulate the data attached to them all the time. So strings are immutable. However, if we use an equal sign, we can shove new value into it and we can do things to change the string and look at what happens with that. And so we have the dot two lowercase and the dot two uppercase methods. They're like, hey, what would the string look like if it's all uppercase? Or what would the string look like if it's all lowercase? And that's what the two uppercase and two lowercase um, methods do not videos. Um, however, with the two uppercase and two lowercase methods, they don't have any impact on things that don't have cases. This includes things like emoji, as well as things like non-Roman characters, for example, the Japanese hiragana katakana languages. And so, watashi doesn't have a case. And because it doesn't have a case, it's not going to be working with the two uppercase or two lowercase. It'll be the exact same sequence either way. So, just as an FYI, case doesn't always impact everything depending on what you're actually using it as a string. Now the next one there is trim. Now, for example, if you're filling out some web form somewhere and you type in some stuff and you just hit there and you rest your uh, thing on the space bar or a little um, cat comes in and steps on your keyboard and puts the space bar all over at the end of the thing and you then collect the data. And you wanna get rid of all those space bar presses because you love your kitty, but you don't need all those spaces that the kitty gave to you. Well, the dot trim method is the way to go because what it does is it takes the um, useless strings at the beginning and at the end and wipes them out and returns the value of that string without those extra spaces. Great way to do some cool defensive programming and something you should really take a look at doing. We also have dot .concat. Dot .concat is a method-based way, aka an object-oriented way, to do the functionality of the concatenation operator, aka the plus sign. So you want to squish some strings together? Well, use dot .concat. It's a great way to put the strings together using concat. Now, we also have to um, sometimes treat strings as a true data type, aka we want to store them in a digital format in the way that, of course, that computers deal with data is by bytes. And we can actually extract the bytes out of a string by using the get bytes method. This returns a byte array, aka all the bytes in an array format of fixed size that make up that string. And so it's a great way we can do some cool stuff with that. If we're, say, for example, we want to actually write the file, um, our text to a stream, and we're not using a string buffer or a print writer, and because those are the ways we can actually put the string right in there. If we want to take it that way and actually save a file with that, we use the file output string, we use the get bytes method as a way to grab the string, um, the bytes for that string array, so we can actually put it in there. So that's a quick little bit of notes. Let's go ahead and take a look at some code so we can see how this is going to work. So we have the string thing class right here, so we can actually take a look at how we can see those examples we just saw in the lecture, see them in code. As you can see, I've got a scanner input right here so I can split between screens and pause what we're working on. My start method calls two methods. We can actually demonstrate these components. And so as you can see right here in the basic AP strings, we're using with the uh, basic methods we just talked about with the dot length, dot index of, dot compare to, and dot equals. The ones you have to know for the AP subset. And so we go ahead and click right here. We'll go ahead and demonstrate that. And so here we have the AP subset methods of string. Words go here, its length is 13. Is car in that string? Well, we look through it, we don't see it, so it returns negative one. However, is or inside that string? We look through it, and yes, it's at index one. Now, if there was multiple words, it would still just return one because it only returns the first time it does it. So just remember, the index of only gets the first value. Now, when we look at comparing strings, we have words go here dot compare to comparison gives us negative 12, but 
Words is before comparison. Well, yes, words is. But remember again that when we're talking about strings and we're using that dot compare to method, that capital letters come before all lowercase um, letters. And so because capital letters come first, words that go here do compare to comparison gives us this negative number. One of the ways we can get around that is by looking at how we're going to run this code. Anytime we want to do comparison or sorting it alphabetically, we force everything to be all uppercase or all lowercase using the dot two uppercase or two lowercase methods so we don't cause confusing things like this to happen. Words that go here dot compare to words go here is zero because those are the same strings. Comparison dot compare to words go here gives us 12 because comparison comes after it, again, because of the fact we have that demonstration that lowercase letters come after uppercase letters. And comparison dot equals words go here also false because they're not the same set of strings. Pretty easy to go. Now, we're going to look at the cool subset of strings. Let's scroll down here and we'll see that as well. And so we have our cool strings. And again, I'm using the nice little feature of single quotes as well as the trademark um, copyright and registered mark things because we can. Why not? Um, I'm going to look inside the strings. We're going to use the dot contains method true. What's next for string method four? Index of string int four and index of string int method negative one. We take a look at that word race car it contains car. Yes, it does. Race car not last index of car is at four. That's where the four uh, spot of it is. The index of string int of car two is still four because it's the only time it's in there. And then we pass it six. Nope, it's not after spot six, so it's going to give us negative one for that value. Now we're going to look at changing the strings. We're using the two uppercase, two lowercase, and trim on that. As you can see right here, we have that mix case all over. I'm using that where I'm going to put that on that because it has all those spaces right here inside that. So we'll see how those work. So click right here. And so result of away cooler selection of text to two lowercase is all away look cooler selection of text. Mixed case words all over is all mixed case words all over. AKA talking in caps lock, but notice because the spaces don't have a case, they don't change. And if I take mixed case words over dot trim, I'm shrunk down to mixed case words all over without changing the text inside. I just got rid of the spaces around the um, what's left of it. Now, the next thing we have is when we're going to do the manipulation of the string. And so we have the dot split. And so if we do a split on quotes, we're going to get this array. Well, what? Array? Well, it's because all I did is I just printed off the value of that, which gives the java.string um, square brackets on there. says it's an array. You know, that's not very helpful. So the way I'm going to take a look at that then is I'm going to actually go using a for loop to sequence over that. And so system.print sequence plus a tab. And so I have a space, space, way, space, tab, space, that, that, that tabs between all those values. And then I have right there. Then if I want to use it with the other one, if I use it with a space on there, so I'm using a split on a space value, so I have um, with that right there, we have, so I'm using split right here with a space. And for each word inside that sequence, I'm going to go over each word at a time. And so we have the cute little bit right here where I have a way cooler selection of text going for one at a time. And then finally, I'm going to use the dot concat. I'm going to squish them together. And if I want to get the bytes, let's do that one more time. We have the array, not very helpful, but then I have the individual bytes, 32, 32, 32 for the spaces, 77, 105, 120, 101, 100. And that's how I'm going to get the actual letters that go inside that. And so that's how we're ready to good to go. And so we have that right there. We print it all up and get all the bytes. We can see individual values with that. So again, strings are pretty cool. Taking a quick look at that as we go back to this lovely sequence. Taking a quick look at this, we just went back. We went over all the AP subset methods for string, length, substring, index, equals, and compare to. And then we also went over some of the cooler subset methods that we have where you can do that for contains less index of, two lowercase and two uppercase, dot trim, dot split, concat, and get bytes. Remember, there's even more methods that are part of the Java API subset for string. You can do really cool things, and you can find some more stuff out. Thanks again, and have a great day. Cheers.